History was made as Edward Caban was named NYPD's first Latino commissioner. Mayor Adams credited Caban and former Commissioner Keyshawn Sewell for helping reduce crime in the city. But the newly appointed commissioner still has a whole lot of work ahead of him as he will have to address fears of rising crime and recruitment struggles inside of the NYPD. Join us now with more on the newly appointed leadership. Paul Giacomo, president of the Detectives Endowment Association. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Good morning, thank you. 177 year history in the NYPD. This is mm -hmm. the first Latino commissioner. What are your thoughts? Well, I, I think it's a, a good move. I, I look forward to working with him. He rose through the ranks of the NYPD and he has a clear understanding of, of, uh, of this department. Why do you think this is a better pick in terms of picking Mr. Caban instead of other people out there, why did he have it, in, including, I know his background and history of 32 years in the department. Well, yeah, again, he rose through the ranks and he has a clear understanding of uh, how his department works, and I, I think he's, uh, he's going to do good for our department and our detectives. Talk mm -hmm. about the leadership style between him and Keyshawn Sewell, who mm -hmm. recently resigned. Right. Well, uh, you know, again, uh, she was a wonderful person, very genuine, very sincere. Uh, but, uh, you know, Commissioner Caban rose through the ranks of the NYPD, and uh, he knows how this department works. What does that mean? He knows how the department well, works? What, you know, what separates the two? Well, you know, when you're in the NYPD, there, it's, a, it's a gigantic uh, entity, and there are many divisions within the police department, and you really have to have a clear understanding of how the, each division works, and he, I think he does. Well, it's a bureaucratic entity and agency as well. Mm -hmm. So we saw a lot of issues with uh, Ms. Sewell as commissioner being bigfooted by the mayor and by the, uh, the safety, I guess, strategist who also is under the mayor. They kind of overrode her on some of the decisions. I think that's what caused some stress there. Well, you know, uh, again, my concern is, is the safety and the well-being of New York City detectives. Uh, the politics that happen in City Hall uh, is really not... Uh... Unfortunately, as you know, the politics goes hand in hand. So if, if it yeah. works well politically, then, you know, people on the streets are going to be a bit safer. Yes, but I, I think that, uh, you know, we have to really concentrate on what's causing the crime here in New York City. And, I, and I've been saying it for quite some time now is these bail reform laws that were enacted. And uh, there are laws on the books now that embolden the criminal element. And yeah. it's, it's making public safety a major issue. Um, they have to overturn these laws and, and send a message to the crim criminals that if you commit a crime, there are going to be consequences. What about the young people, though? I mean, every single day, Bianca and I, we sit up here, we report, for instance, today, a 15-year-old in Brooklyn mm -hmm. shot in the back dead. Yep. We talked about a 12-year-old shot. We talked about a 5-year-old riding in the car with their mother mm -hmm. shot. What, how do we focus on that? That doesn't have anything to do with bail reform. Well, it has to, it has to do with consequences. You know, if you're arrested... But some of with these people doing the shootings are young people. I understand that. But years ago, when you were caught with a firearm, there was a consequence. There are no consequences now. There are people locked up three, four, five times with, with guns that are back out on the street. And you're sending a clear message to the criminal element that they're in charge. And we have to change these laws. And Albany has to do it because they're the ones that created these laws that are emboldening the criminals. Yeah. All right, there's a report from the Center for Justice Innovation. Mm -hmm. They did a study on 100 youths from the Crown Heights, Crown, Crown Heights area mm -hmm. of Brooklyn where they said they didn't feel safe. That's why right. they're carrying weapons. Is it about policing? Is it about what's going on in Albany? What about just boots on the ground and providing more opportunities? Well, the, the New York City Police Department and detectives are out there doing their job every day. They're arresting these individuals. It's, it's the, the criminal justice system that's letting them out and these new laws that were enacted that are letting these criminals back out on the street and they're emboldened and they commit more mm -hmm. crimes and carrying guns uh, more and more Ghost often. guns? What do you think about that? Ghost guns are a major problem uh, throughout not only New York City but throughout the whole country. And you're also talking about the raise the age law as well, mm -hmm. affecting um, young people that are carrying guns. Where does Mr. Gabon stand in terms of your thoughts being similar? On the similar page of bail reform has caused some issues that we need to fix. Absolutely. You know, I think uh, I think he's he knows policing. He's been in the police department for mm -hmm. quite a long time, and he knows what it takes to get this city back in shape. And I, I think he'll have a you know a good shot in doing it. I think there's also the issue in terms of just how the structure works. There's a micromanagement structure between, you know, the mayor, the deputy mayor. Um, how do you think he's a bit more on the same page with the mayor? Because if that is true, then, you know, you're saying the policing will be more effective, correct? Well, you know, everybody has a boss, and, uh, yeah. you know, yeah, you know, the mayor is the boss of the city, and uh, each commissioner in every agency, not only the police department, uh, works for the mayor, and they, they take orders from the mayor. So uh, 
we'll see how it goes, but I think I think we'll be uh, in very good shape. And also another historic appointment, the deputy commissioner, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Um, first woman, minority yes. woman. Can, yes. can we talk about her briefly? Sure. She's got a very good reputation. I know her. She's uh, very kind, very genuine. And that's what's important here is uh, that these people that are in these positions now are genuine and sincere, and yeah. I look forward to working with both of them. we got to go. Last words of advice. What do you say to him? Well, let's try and get up to Albany and change these bail reform laws to, you know, make public safety a priority. Mm. Yes. Well, we certainly do want that to be a priority as well. Mr. Paul Giacomo, president of the Texas Endowment Association. Thank you so much for being here. Last term's recruitment, because I know that we have an issue with that. We want to bring those numbers up. How well, are that's, we doing? Uh, you know, policing, unfortunately, is a dying profession, and yeah. uh, we have to try and turn that around. I hope that. hope we see that. We yes. need that. Thank for you. the safety of everyone. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much.